Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and in today's video we are going to discuss cardiology referrals. So in PLEP2 exam, in a lot of stations you are working in the GP surgery and whenever the patient presents to you uh, in the GP setting, you are going to take a detailed history, do your physical examination and based on the history and physical exam findings, you need to decide whether this patient needs an immediate referral to the a &E, or they need an appointment with the specialist either on urgent basis or routine basis or you can treat them in the primary care okay so that's why you need to know uh, the red flags for um, each condition each symptom you need to know the red flags so that you can send them to the accident and emergency department and you need to know which conditions need an urgent referral which condition can be managed in the primary care okay so first of all let's take a look at the immediate referrals uh, in cardiology so first of all, suspected acute coronary syndrome. So any patient who is presenting with severe ongoing chest pain or chest pain that is uh, that is lasted for more than 10 minutes uh, or chest pain that is new at rest or with minimal activity, okay? So chest pain that is new at rest or with minimal activity means that a patient who has already been diagnosed with stable angina is now presenting with chest pain at rest or chest pain with minimal exertion. Okay, so it means that the previously stable angina is either converting into an unstable one or there is an ongoing myocardial infarction. Okay, so any patient with suspected acute coronary syndrome, you need to refer them immediately to the a &E. Okay, any patient with suspected pulmonary embolism also need immediate referral. Any patient with suspected aortic dissection also need immediate referral to the a &E. Suspected aortic dissection also presents with uh, severe chest pain which is radiating to the back and um, when you check the blood pressure, the blood pressure is going to be uh, high and unequal blood pressure in both arms, okay? Persistent severe hypertension with systolic blood pressure more than 180. So this is basically a hypertensive emergency where systolic blood pressure is more than 180 and it is associated with headache, confusion, visual changes, so blurring of vision, papilledema, and retinal hemorrhages on fundoscopy. This patient also needs immediate referral to the a &E. um, Then patient with acute heart failure. So this can be any patient who is, for example, post-myocardial infarction and is now presenting with um, shortness of breath um, and uh, dependent edema and raised JVP, okay? This patient needs immediate referral to the accident and emergency department as well. Okay. Then any patient with persistent palpitations, with chest pain, shortness of breath, hypotension, loss of consciousness, or presyncope. Uh, presyncope means that the patient feel like that they are about to faint or about to pass out, okay? So this is basically all these four features. They suggest a hemodynamically unstable patient, okay? So chest pain, shortness of breath, hypotension, loss of consciousness. So any patient with persistent palpitation and hemodynamic instability, which is uh, which can be uh, which is suggested by chest pain, shortness of breath, uh, hypotension, confusion, or loss of consciousness, needs immediate referral to the accident and emergency department because this means that a life-threatening arrhythmia is going on. Okay, now urgent referral. So um, we have two important cases, we have two important conditions that need to be referred urgently to the uh, to the specialist, okay? So in case of urgent referral, you need to get them an appointment with the cardiologist and the cardiologist will see them within two weeks, okay? Or in case of palpitations, in case of these patients here, they need to be seen in one week, okay? But uh, don't go into the detail of one week and two week in exam. Just tell them that um, I will refer you urgently to the cardiologist, okay? So palpitation in a hemodynamically stable patient, okay? So there are palpitation, but the patient is not hemodynamically unstable, which means that there is no chest pain, no shortness of breath, uh, no loss of consciousness, um, and no hypotension, okay? Palpitation in a hemodynamically stable patient in palpitation during exercise. Okay, so exercise-induced palpitation. There is an underlying structural heart disease. So there is either uh, congenital heart disease 
or um, valvular heart diseases like rheumatic heart disease, mitral valve prolapse, etc. Um, and there is a family history of inherited heart diseases or sudden cardiac death. Okay. So here we have a patient who is hemodynamically stable, which means that no chest pain, no sharpness of breath, no hypertension, no loss of consciousness, but palpitations are provoked by exercise. Okay. Or there is an underlying structural heart disease, or there is family history of inherited heart diseases or sudden cardiac death. So these three features, you need to get them an urgent appointment with the cardiologist, okay? And another condition that you need to refer urgently to the cardiologist is decompensated chronic heart failure, okay? So acute heart failure, you need to refer them urgently to the accident and emergency department, sorry, immediately to the accident and emergency department. And a patient with chronic heart failure uh, who is now deteriorating, you need to get them an urgent appointment with their cardiologist, okay? Now, here I, I have included palpitations, which are low uh, risk, and you can manage them in the primary care. These include palpitation in, obviously, a hemodynamically stable patient, and the patient tell you that there are skip beats or there is short fluttering, and the ECG is normal, there is no family history, they are not provoked by the exercise, there is no underlying structural heart disease. So these palpitations, they are low risk and they can be managed in primary care. An example will include a, a student, for example, who has upcoming exam and he is drinking lots and lots of coffee. Uh, he can have skip beats or short flutterings, which are basically premature ventricular contraction. The ECG is essentially going to be normal. There will be no family history, no structural heart disease, etc. And the patient is hemodynamically stable. So this patient is overall low risk and can be managed in the primary care. You just need to counsel the patient on um, decreasing caffeine consumption, stress management, and uh, safety net them about the red flags. Um, and that's it. So that was all about cardiology referrals. I hope it was helpful and I will see you soon with the next video.